after about 50 years. This is the reunion of Sir Michael and the Sound, a la Mike and the Hurricanes, and we're here gathered at Smokey Bones Cafe after not having been together for many, many years. So everybody's here. And what remains to be seen is whether or not we can still play. Uh, earlier this year and decided it'd be a good thing to just one last time we get together, everybody, and see if we can't make some noises. We're getting together, the old, the old band we had from back in the 60s, and uh, we all kind of did the thing for about five or six years, and we all went our separate ways for 30 plus years. I just like to say today, I just kind of like, I haven't seen some of these guys for, like I haven't seen Lad or you since uh, probably the late 60s. That's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to get together so and see how to play anything. <laughs> it was a great time. I mean, it, uh, I, I was into music in a big way because of what was happening with the, with the English bands, the Beatles, and the Rolling Stones. And to be able to do that, even at, at such a low, and I mean low level, ladies and gentlemen, that it was, it was great fun. Yeah, well, I'm not exactly sure of that history, except that we got a manager who decided that the British scene was the happening thing to do. So we sometimes even had to speak with a British influence, but we did play a lot of British rock anyway. We, we always liked that, the Rolling Stones, the Kinks, the Yardbirds, that kind of stuff. Well, my name is Bill, uh, but everybody knew me as Wild Man. I was the road manager of the band. I would set up the equipment, tune the guitars, go out for beer and sodas and stuff, change a guitar string when it broke. Who's this person next to you? So this is Kathy Mitchell, and she is our A1 fan club president and probably sole member. <laughs> but she's responsible for, uh, what's the address? 60stampabaybands.com, 60's Tampa right? We went every weekend to see them when they played at the FCA Hall. And I had a friend, and the two of us would always be there early, sometimes go in the back door with them. Ooh. Yeah. And just enjoyed their music back tremendously. Door pass, huh? Yeah. He came back, and he was in the same. Oh, man. Oh, he's got I mean, he, I didn't even show up oh, here. But we could pass one another on the street and not know that that's our, yeah. <laughs> our brother that we spent, just like he brothers, for all the time. We're just three, dying, you know, three years at least. All the, all the love, all the fights, all the... All the victories. They were already formed before I showed up. And uh, we had another guitar player before Lad. His name was Dwayne. And I was uh, uh, friends with him from high school. And he came over to my house one day and he said, I'm playing in this band. Now, back then it was called uh, Mike and the Variations. Uh, and he said, uh, they need a drummer. Why don't you, uh, you know, try out? So I thought, well, you know, okay, I, I'm fun, that, that is fun. And I had real awful set of drums. I mean, they were mis, mis, mismatched, they were very cheap. They were, I used to borrow the cymbal from the Largo High School, which is where I went to high school. And Rick, this man here, did not want me in the band because they had a previous drummer who had a real nice set of drums. And I think they had a job coming up where we were each gonna earn about five or 10 bucks a piece. And uh, they needed somebody, and I was the only one available. And uh, so that's that's how I got into the band. But, you know, you thought you were going to be a famous rock and roller. You really uh, set the world on fire. Probably in hindsight, it was good. We never got really popular, never really made a lot of money. Probably would have never gone and finished school and do, did what we did. You know, so. But it was fun at the time, because we were all musicians who loved to play. One of those kind of things you never forget, those good memories when you were young. There's, uh, unless you've been in a band, you uh, toured and lived off of the NAB's machine and had to get free hotel rooms until you could get your first check. People don't know what it is. Uh, they also don't know what it is to go out in front of a huge crowd. It's paid a lot of money to see you. And you carry that with you the rest of your life when you're dealing with people one-on-one. -on -one that uh, there's a very empowering thing that goes with being a star at any level. I guess really like enjoying it. Yeah. The, first, the, first, the first car I used to drive, I had an old Ford Falcon, and I had to take the back seat out of it and put it on the equipment. John and I would drive that poor little Ford Falcon for the gigs. And it finally gave out, and then later we built a trailer, which was rather interesting. I thought we had a, we, had, we painted it up real neat. I'm trying to think we had like a, I think we had a pattern like a Monopoly board, I believe. Parcheesi. Parcheesi, yeah. 
and I'm up on this riser, so I'm up higher than the rest of the guys, right? And we're playing along and uh, having a big time, and uh, the, the drummer's throne, that's what we're called, the drummer's has a throne, collapsed. And I went backwards in the, and disappeared. Of course, the drum stopped, and everybody turns around and looks, and I'm not there anymore because I'm on the floor behind the behind the curtain trying to figure out what the hell happened. If I didn't enjoy you being along, you added such a flavor to it. There were so many places we went where we couldn't get out of the car or we couldn't go in to get food that if we didn't have Wild Man with us with his relatively short hair, we would have all starved or been beaten up. So we all owe you our life, that's for sure. And you could tune a guitar. That was a big, that was a big important. Muscles and moving the amps, not so much, but tuning, good. <laughs> and Mike gave me a camera that he had, and I took pictures of the band. So for years, I developed my photography, got better and better. And today, Kathy brought some pictures that we looked at that brings back a lot of memories. Kid. That's great. I learned about it. The kid. We posed as guys. We all had long hair. And uh, it was some of the most exciting times of my life. Uh, let's spend the night together. I like that one. That was one of my favorites. Rick hated it, but I liked it. Those were those were wonderful times. And uh, you know, it, it, when Would you, you do it again, uh, if I was young, <laughs> in a minute. <laughs> I mean, I can remember going to USF, and uh, I think there were 14 of us out of 15 or 20,000 that had long hair, which was rather interesting. I really can't wait to see what happens, to be honest with you. You know, it's it's going to be a surprise, and I don't really care really too much whether it sounds any good or, it, or I mean, that's not important. And be, to be able to, to be here and be able to do this with everybody again is just, just out of sight. What remains to be seen is whether or not we can still play. Now, some of the guys have good training. I mean, they were classically trained musicians. Some of us just kind of picked it up. We've been doing different things, a little bit of acoustic here and there. But we've got a studio rented, so we're going there tonight. Stay tuned and we'll see what happens.
I think probably to me, I guess one of the greatest things of all of us, Mike, everybody, is, and, we, and they'll never take it away from any of us, including you, we live the rock and roll generation, the whole, from the beginning to where it is now. <laughs> 50th reunion tour. <laughs> <laughs> the band is back together. <laughs>